The Florida scrub is the opposite of what this state is known for. More like a desert than a swamp. It's the remnant of a lost world full of animals so bizarre that you won't believe they're real. From venomous snakes that swim through sand to spiders that almost no people have ever seen. Today, we're hunting for this ecosystem's weirdest and rarest animals to add them to our life list. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers on a mission to document all of the world's most extreme animals while we still can. But we don't have much time because the scrub is in danger of being lost forever. So alongside some good friends, we're recording as many species here as possible to build a case to protect it. Our first lifer find is easily one of the most extreme insects out there, because their hunting style is so dominant that they're compared to tigers. Got him. Nice. It wasn't easy, but we finally have our tiger beetle in hand. We can tell from that gorgeous green and blue iridescent coloration that this is a unicolor tiger beetle, and they are active predators. One of the most impressive things about these beetles to me is actually their speed. This is the fastest insect in all of North America, and one of the fastest in the entire world. When they are in pursuit of their prey, they run so quickly that their eyes can't even process the world around them. Their speed is literally blinding. Tiger beetles really only slow down to reorient themselves between sprints or to take off and fly away. So suffice to say, filming them is very hard, but worth it for such a cool lifer. The Florida scrub is what we call a center of endemism, meaning that there's a high concentration of species here that can't be found anywhere else on Earth. Like our lifer Florida scrub lizard, we spotted sunning itself on a log. This scrub endemic actually requires exposed patches of habitat and can't survive in forests with full canopy cover. So they're only found in small, disjunct populations across the state that don't interact. Almost like they're living on islands. Their story is actually a clue about the origins of this strange ecosystem. Because the whole region, in fact all of Florida, used to be an island chain. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, sea levels were much higher, so the areas we know as scrub today formed as white sand islands. And all the animals that lived there evolved in complete isolation from the mainland. That's why there are so many weird animals and endemics here. It's because the conditions of the scrub have always been different from the rest of the state, so their survival strategies have to match it. And some of them have evolved in crazy ways to take advantage of the sandy remnants of these secret islands. Got it! Mikey just called out something incredible. Holy cow! Oh, you got it! Let's go! Congrats, dude! One of the hardest lizards to find in all of Florida. This is a peninsula mole skink, a very exciting lifer for us to add because this is never a species you are guaranteed to see, even if you're in the right habitat. They spend most of their time buried underground. You can see they have that very narrow, smooth body that creates very little resistance as they essentially swim through this sandy substrate. Now you'll notice it's almost hard to tell that it's a lizard from a distance because their legs are just so small, and that's yet another way that they're able to move so fluidly through the sand. They don't have big legs sticking out and getting in their way. It's amazing to see how much wildlife this one remnant stand of scrub can support, but this is just a tiny fraction of what this ecosystem used to look like. Habitat destruction for human development is the single biggest cause of scrub decline. Many of Florida's most well-known cities were built right on top of this ecosystem, and literally countless hectares of scrub have been converted into agriculture fields and citrus groves to support them. Over 90% of Florida's scrub habitat has already been destroyed, but the hundreds of endemic and scrub-specialized species that rely on this ecosystem have nowhere else to go forcing them to squeeze into smaller and smaller patches of habitat just to survive. But the scrub is amazingly resilient, and the next lifer we found proved that there are still tons of fascinating animals making a living here. This is Diogmedes Assurians, a hanging thief robber fly. Now, all the members of the genus Diogmedes are referred to as hanging thieves because of a very interesting hunting behavior. 
to catch their insect prey, which are usually bees and wasps, they will actually hang upside down from a branch from their front legs and use those long back four legs to hold the bee or the wasp as far away from their face as possible to prevent any stings while they're eating their prey. And they're venomous, right? Yeah, they actually have a slight neurotoxic venom that they can inject with that long, thin proboscis, though it is completely harmless to people. You may not realize it, but millions of people in Florida depend on the scrub. Many parts of this state only exist because of the services it provides. Scrub plants evolved to grow in sandy soil, and their roots hold it together way better than non-native garden plants. So just as they form the home of endemic katydids and hyper-specialist beetles, they protect our neighborhoods and cities from erosion too. Because it's made of sand, the scrub is also amazing at absorbing water, which makes it a critical tool to fight flooding that can't be replaced. Keeping the sandy environment intact is important for more than just humans, though, because one of the most rarely seen snakes in America relies on it, too. This is one of the weirdest snakes that we could have found in all of Florida. This is a coastal dunes crowned snake. This snake is seldom ever seen at the surface because they spend virtually their entire lives underground. Now, one of the craziest things about the coastal dunes crowned snake is this is actually a venomous species. They wouldn't be dangerous to a person. It's not even capable of biting, but they use their venom to subdue the prey that they're eating, which in this case is actually a lot of beetle larvae. But something that crowned snakes are famous for is their ability to take down and eat centipedes, which are themselves incredibly effective fossorial predators. So this guy would go toe to toe with something that any invertebrate out here would be terrified of. Taking down centipedes almost as big as they are is a wild feat, and it's amazing to think that such a rare and impressive hunter is living right under our feet. But they're not the only ones hiding out of sight, because a whole new cast of creatures is still waiting to come out. Right now, as the sun is setting, this habitat is very quiet, so you could be forgiven for thinking that there's not that much out here. But once the sun fully sets and the temperature drops just a little bit, this habitat absolutely comes alive. The night shift in the scrub brings out the really crazy creatures. And as we set off into the night, our flashlight beams picked up thousands of tiny, glistening lights shining up from the ground that almost look like stars or dewdrops after rain. But those aren't distant reflections, they're eyes. The scrub is crawling with hundreds of wolf spiders, and following the brightest eye shine led us to our lifer, Osceola wolf spider, one of the biggest spiders in the country. They can take down prey as large as lizards, but they're competing with the smaller Ceratiola wolf spider that is just as formidable and extremely abundant. So the question is, how do all of these hunters get enough to eat? These are pretty cool spiders. This is a scrub endemic species of spider, which means that these can only be found in these white sandy scrub habitats here in peninsular Florida. And what I find quite interesting is that they've partitioned their habitat very carefully in this area because the ceratiolas will spend most of their time in the open white sand whereas the Osceola will spend a lot of their time in the leaf litter and all the pine needles that have a much darker color, which contributes to why these spiders both look very different, but also are able to co-occur in the exact same habitat and not have to compete so heavily that one gets pushed out. Their specific microhabitat preferences help keep the effects of these predators balanced, but as we continued our search, it seemed like there was more than enough prey around because there were hunters everywhere. Ant-mimicking little Yucatan mantises stalked along the ground. Carnivorous, robust shield-backed katydids patrolled the trees. But among all the carnage, a flash of movement caught our eye. Our lifer Florida woods cockroach. They have the incredible ability to spray a foul-smelling liquid from their abdomen up to a meter away when threatened. But their slow movement and the fact that they can't fly makes them an easy target for predators, like this huge Osceola wolf spider who was stalking it from the leaf litter. Using her strong night vision and insanely sensitive hairs, she clocked the wood roach right away. When the roach got in range, she lunged forward and nailed it with her huge fangs, killing it in seconds with potent neurotoxic venom. But some insects out here are big enough to fend off a spider attack like this. And Mikey just caught a choice specimen to prove it. 
All right, nice catch there, Mikey. Thank you. So this is a smooth ox beetle and a very impressive individual at that. So you can see these three long horn-like projections coming out of it. Now this is actually how we can tell that this individual right here is a male and not just any male, a major male. And you can see this is a kind of intimidating looking beetle, so you may be wondering if this is at all dangerous. But in reality, these guys are actually herbivores, so they're only eating plants, things like grasses and leaves and fruits. And they serve a very important function out here in this scrub ecosystem because they act as decomposers. They're breaking down a lot of the decaying plants and recycling their nutrients back into the environment. It's encouraging how many decomposers and other critical ecological links we've seen, but the future of the Florida scrub is still very uncertain. What we do know, though, is that we are the ones that control what happens next, and we only have one shot to get this right. This ecosystem takes hundreds of years to form, so if we lose the scrub we have now, it's literally impossible to get it back in our lifetime. We have to protect this place because we still have so much to learn about it. And Spencer proved that perfectly when he caught a spider that few people have ever seen before. That is a burrowing wolf spider. Not a species that I knew existed until probably about a year ago when you pointed them out to me. When I take her out, look at the way she moves. It's totally different. A lot of other wolf spiders would be gone by now. Yep. Slower, more methodical, and a lot of the reason for that is they live almost their entire lives in these vertical burrows that just go deep down into the ground, waiting for prey to come to them. So when a small ground-dwelling invertebrate moves past her burrow and trips the fine little webs that she strings all around the entrance, that is when she explodes out and grabs them with those massive chelicerae. This is not an easy spider to find. This is probably one of the first times that this particular species has ever been filmed on camera. Really? Yeah, probably. That is awesome. This trip yielded over 30 lifers for us, and we've only seen a fraction of the true number of species that calls this irreplaceable ecosystem home. And the coolest part is that this is something you can do too. The more people who are out there life listing and documenting the wildlife of the scrub, the better a case we can build for why we need to protect what we have. The good news is, this patch of scrub seems to be doing really well. And one of the best pieces of evidence for that fact is the mind-blowing abundance of red widows here. They're actually one of the rarest spiders in America, and they can only thrive when their habitat is very healthy too. But that may not last forever. The red widow is at the center of a massive problem facing the scrub, and we don't have much time to stop it. If you want to learn the full story of these incredible spiders and see what you can do to help protect the scrub yourself, check out this video where we give you a rare window into their secret lives and show you what's really going on. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.